Hi, this is LG Petro from Entombed AD, coming from you from Exit Festival in Novi Sad. You're watching Agoraphobic News. Hey, hey, Milos here, Agoraphobic News, this time with Mr. Lars Petrov of Entombed AD. Hello, sir, how are you? I'm very good, no uh, lepo. <laughs> so, uh, basically, your father is from Macedonia, right? Uh, my mother. Your mother? My mother. My uh, father was from Finland. But uh, my mother is from uh, Macedonia, and uh, she is at home, drinking coffee, and wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> But this is great. Yeah, but, uh, when did she come to Sweden, you know? Uh, it was when she was 16 years old. <clears throat> she looked for work uh -huh. and then she settled down there and then I came along and then... Um, <laughs> uh, but um, she's very proud of me. Yeah, awesome. And the last, last time you were in Serbia was in 2016 and you had a show with Entombed AD and Grave. So can you recall that? Yes, and um, Belgrade is very close to here, so I know that was a great show with uh, a lot of Serbian headbangers. We had a great time, I remember. We, uh, they gave us uh, this special uh, rakia with, with, our, with our logos in them, so I don't remember who gave it to us, but thank you. We don't remember nothing from that night <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so. That was like my baptism of fire when it comes to Entombed, and I was amazed by the distortion and raw power of of the whole thing, you know. Yeah, thank you very much. We will try to uh, reform that tonight. Uh, we came yesterday, we had a great time here. A little bit uh, too hot for our northern uh, jeans, but, <laughs> but, it's, but it's been great. Uh, there, was a, there was a storm here today. Yeah. And it almost got uh, cancelled, everything. But yeah. the, the true heroes, the organizers here, they pulled it out and here we are waiting for the show and we have a great time a lot of friendly people around around here so there's a lot of mosquitoes <laughs> yes i didn't uh, i didn't uh, experience yet but i'm sure they will attack us sooner or later fucking killed me i mean and you guys have a new yeah there's a bunch of them and you guys have a, a new album coming out uh, bowels of earth on uh, via uh, century media records on august 30th yes sir uh, we look forward to that and we might play uh, one or two songs from that album tonight see how the people react if the people are still here at two o'clock but <laughs> it'll be okay it will be okay it's, it's a good way for us to learn the new songs if we can play it live so but uh, so far so good so um, we're looking forward to um, the album coming out and then uh, do some touring again and um, uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't think we come, we're touring, we are aborted and beast, but um, I don't think we come to Serbia that, this time, but there will be the whole next year as, as well, so yes. it'll be okay. And, uh, I saw that you guys are going to cover a song by Motorhead called Back at the Funny Farm. Yes, uh, that, that was the, we, we do a, a couple of covers. But uh, that, that was the first one I bought, the first uh, heavy metal um, vinyl. Another but perfect day. Yes, in the most underrated the Motorhead album, I think. I don't know why people don't like that album. It has songs like Dancing on Your Grave and all the good stuff. Yeah, I mean, Rocket and uh, the whole album. And, and the album, the, the, the sound is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I don't like uh, Orgasmatron album. Uh, it's kind of weird, but it has a good title title track. But this one is like, and plus the al our album artwork, you know. Yeah, and it was great to do a cover of it, and we will see if people like it because, yeah, man, Lemmy and Motorhead is a it's a big match to win. <laughs> We're gonna do it, but yeah, if you don't if you don't try it, you never know. So it's good to uh, get it out of the system. <laughs> Basically, it seems that Lemmy is like the founding father of death and roll because it's kind of, you know, he has that voice and uh, pretty much the songs that are, that can be called even death and roll. Yeah, I mean, he has that scrapey voice and it fits to rock and roll, heavy metal, hard rock, uh, you know, and it's 
truly a legend that we, we, we cherish in, in our hearts and we still go on with every metal head <laughs> throughout the years, I think. Yeah. When you compare like the last album with uh, Do uh, Back to the Front, uh, the Dead On, what is like the, the main difference? Yeah, I mean, we have uh, new inspirations, uh, we have a uh, new guitarist, we have a new bass player, uh, especially Guilherme came in with uh, different views and, and uh, with an extra guitar you get that more uh, aggressive feeling and I think we, we, we go back to old school and in a new fresh way, so we are very very happy with it, it's very energetic, I think. <laughs> Sometimes it's weird to talking about your own music, but... <laughs> But uh, we're really, really happy and we look forward to come out with it live there. And uh, back in the day you had a band called Morbid and uh, you played drums there, right? Yes. I Are you still like playing drums or...? No, I forgot how to play. Uh, the, the arms are getting weaker, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to be a good drummer, you have to practice and practice. Yeah, yeah. And I switched to... Uh, screaming and growling and <laughs> stuff like that, so it's uh, okay. And, uh, how did Pear Dead Olin uh, come into the picture of that band, you know, the legendary frontman? Uh, well, that was a long time ago, but uh, I guess we, we met through a local record store called Heavy Sound, that was uh, only metal, and you put up uh, advertisements and it was like, yeah, singer seeks a band, and then that's how we met, and from then on we did the demos and stuff. And uh, yeah, he was also a good, uh, good soul within the uh, black metal community. And yeah. not many people know that I play drums there, but <laughs> but but they, they know now, and it was good times produ producing music. Was Morbid influential band on the black and death metal scene of Sweden. Yeah, I mean, think so. I think so. Morbid was influenced by Bathory, and and then uh, yeah, of course Bathory. No, nobody can top that, you know. <laughs> but. Um, I, I was uh, last week at a party at the first original drummer and this is uh, uh, Jonas Åkerlund that do all the videos for, uh, you know, the video Smack My Bitch Up, he did this once. So, so uh, we were at a party uh, last week, so, woo so uh, it's good uh, to work with the legendary guys now. <laughs> what, what was uh, Dead like, I mean? Yeah, we had good fun, maybe he got depressed. Uh, throughout the years but when when I knew him we were happy we'd drink beer do music sit sit at my mother's house <laughs> and drink beer and play guitar and stuff like that so he was a happy soul yeah, I mean what happened I know nobody knows what happens but you know we can we can just uh, we have the memories and the good times we had so and, uh, you know, when I was uh, listening to Left Hand Path, I realized there is this melody uh, that can be heard in the song uh, uh, Russians by Iron Maiden and uh, by King Diamond, uh, the Eye, you know, and all three songs came out in 1990. Yeah, it was, good, uh, it was a good year for metal <laughs> and hope this year will be too, but yeah, I mean, coincidence has happened yeah. and uh, we, we actually, we played uh, in Barcelona uh, on Friday, but w the whole band flew, flew on Thursday because King Diamond was playing, and it was amazing. Yeah. King Diamond always. <laughs> Fucking rules, man. Yes, sorry. Ooh. And uh, what was like reception of uh, Left Hand Path when it came out? I mean, yeah, I mean, it was good. People were like, "Wow, what a guitar sound!" You know, it was like, "Whoa!" But it came out at the right time, at the right yeah. place. So, so. And yeah, it, it was a eye opener, you know, and yeah. it 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 holds to this day, and uh, we we will surely play it today. So, a yeah. couple of songs here and there. So, it'll be it'll be good. But uh, yeah, it, it was it came out at the right time, you know, and it turned out to be uh, yeah, as monumental. people say, monumental and legendary, as people say. So, yeah. and, we're the just happy. and the album artwork was done by Dan Seagrave, yeah. along with the Clandestine, you know. So was that important for the band, you know, to have a, such an artist uh, working with you guys? No, I mean, he's a great artist and he does a lot of great <laughs> cover artworks, you know, Ultras of Madness and stuff like that, so, so we choose to work with him. And yeah, maybe we go back sometime maybe, but um, yeah, 
Uh, but with everything else, you, you continue, you work with other people, but then you know that the people are around and you can work with them more. <laughs> and uh, do you personally like the album uh, Clandestine because you didn't sing on it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome, actually. I think it's probably the best Entombed album of all time. Yeah, I can agree with you. Yeah. But it's a good thing I don't sing on it because it's 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 already good as it is. I don't want to destroy it. <laughs> But uh, we we play some songs too live here, so because uh, people want to hear it. And, uh, what about Wolverine Blues? Uh, when it came out, it was more you know death and roll and a little bit more commercial. But it's yeah, yeah. I mean, time changes and you do you try out some other stuff and then you go back to the beginning and stuff like that. So. But it's good. I mean, we're it's uh, been 30 years and we're still still here, so we we do something good, I think. <laughs> and was that like the first uh, death and roll album of all time, or? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we didn't we didn't label it as death and roll. Uh, other people did. So for for us, it's it's considered death metal. Anyway, so I mean, but you you try the boundaries, well, you know, a little bit here and there. And, uh, what about the song "Out of Hand"? What is that song about? Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, you know, don't care about religion. We just do the music and uh, you know, have a good time. And you know, and if you have a religion, that that's okay too. You know, believe in yourself or believe in, you know, we we do what you feel more comfortable with yourself you know and for us is music for us is go for somebody else is going to the church and stuff like that you know you do what you do nobody can change you you know you're still you like Arno said are you still you <laughs> and uh, what is like the main difference between uh, uh, you know Stockholm and Gothenburg death metal scenes when they came out you know I mean, uh, there are very good death metal bands from uh, from Gothenburg too, and I mean, maybe it's, sometimes it's media or something that wants to. It's like the the S Stockholm scene and the, the Florida sound yeah, yeah. in there. You know, there, there was ne really no com competition. You know, the, the the important thing is we we deliver metal, and what town it comes from, it doesn't really matter. Maybe the Gothenburg had more, little bit more melodies, yeah, but. Yeah. But I think Stockholm death metal also have have that. So, but we're we're all friends anyway. We have go, when we meet, we drink beer. <laughs> so there was never like the big rival rivalry between the two cities and the, you know two scenes. No, not really. No, I mean we were maybe we were very young, like 16 years old and stuff like that. You want to act tough, you know. Yeah. But now when you grow older, it's like, hey, that was good times. Yeah, fucking hell, you know. You can meet Anders from In Flames, you know, they're great guys. We drink beer and talk all times and stuff. It's so good. And what about Tampa, Florida? How important was that, you know, for the whole death metal? I mean, I mean the Florida sound and the, yeah, the American sound is great. I mean, it's a morbid angel, you have Nocturnus, Atheist, I mean, Without that, they wouldn't be death metal today. I think you know, also they all started great, and most of those bands are still around. So, yeah. <laughs> and that's really really cool. And uh, did you used to know Chuck Schuldiner? Uh, not personally, but uh, they played a couple of times in Sweden, and I met him. He really really humble guy, you know. But he was a little bit quiet. He sat in his own room there, concentrating. Uh, really really good. I, I love. The, I've seen. I've seen it two times. Really, really good. And, uh, did, do you like atheist? You know, Tampa, Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, have, yeah, you have. Yeah, there's all, so much music. So it's like, but from the good old days, you still remember it, and most of the bands are still uh, around. You know, like yeah, Morbid Angel, I Am Morbid. You know, David Vincent, a great singer, and a great guy too. You know, so. Yeah, um, especially now when you play the festivals and you meet all those people again, you know, we, we partied uh, two days ago with Napalm Death and, oh, wow. <laughs> that was killer, probably. Yes, they're the same, still the same guys, you know, go, go around playing, have, have a good time. And, uh, when it comes to your vocals, uh, who was like the biggest inspiration for you? I mean, uh, 
for me uh, personally, um, yeah, of course it was Lemmy back in the day, but then I, within a more growly, it was a, a band that never really um, put out a, a, an album. They were called Syndrome from Chicago, later called, uh, uh, no, I don't remember, but uh, uh, Troy Dixler is the singer. So, Devastation Chicago. You should check out that. They, yeah. they did only demos. So, uh, I, I re constantly remind him that he's my number one. So. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, where, did, where do you get the inspiration for the lyrics? I mean, it's everybody does lyrics. I don't do that much, but, you know, we put our inputs and it's about life and death. You know, what's happened. Uh, we can be, you know, we had a show in Mexico and we were supposed to get tequila but they gave us bourbon so from the new album it's called bourbon nightmare because <laughs> it's like yeah well, let's do a song about this okay <laughs> and uh how much do the entombed guys drink uh yes 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 and yes everybody drinks but not so much before the show but you know just to calm down and you know relax and uh, yeah, I mean, if we were here too early, then uh, we would be wasted. <laughs> so we tried to come one hour before. <laughs> awesome. And uh, were you inspired by horror movies, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think every Death Metal fan is a fan of horror movies. It sort of connects with the, with the lifestyle and, and the lyrical points, you know. Bon, bon Jovi sings about love and... That metal band think about death, you know. <laughs> Can you name a few, let's say five favorite horror movies? Uh, for me, for me, number one is uh, uh, Total Recall with Arnold, because it has everything, you know. But then you have all the uh, Lucy Fulci, New York Ripper, and uh, the Phantoms, uh, the uh, the what, Amityville horror horror movies and uh, of course uh, some comedic yeah like yeah, Evil Dead yeah. it's good Evil Dead 2 uh? Evil Dead 2 I like that exactly yeah and uh, then you have um, yeah like yeah more comedy like Blood Diner and stuff like that so yeah, there's a lot there's a lot it's uh, hard to name a few uh, five <laughs> specific <laughs> yeah. and uh, do you have some some last words you know for the interview no, I mean, thank you for for this talk, and we're looking forward to do a good show today. And uh, wow, we hope we'll be back in Serbia again. So, thank you so much. Živeli, brate. Živeli, živeli. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.